Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Colt, and we're continuing our conversations in the Lansing School District. If we're talking about community partnerships, we're talking with the right person, Dory Moore, who coordinates that and is very involved in the Lansing School District and all of our community partnerships. Story, welcome. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what's new. Sure, I am the district graduation specialist. So on top of mentoring and tutoring groups, I also help the high schools and help them with their students that are struggling, come up with ways so they can eventually walk across the finish line and graduate. And one thing I'm really passionate about and believe strongly in is mentoring and tutoring to help students get across that finish line. Well, so uh, let's uh, let's start with uh, mentoring and uh, issue. How do you recruit and you get mentors to be involved with the district? Because I would imagine you have a lot of young people who are interested. Yeah, a lot of it began with people approaching me. And even our superintendent uh, mentioned before I came on board, I was hired last January, that 40 congregations reached out to Ben and he organized a community-wide get together, I guess you could say, with the organizations and churches and people voiced interest. They said, we want help, but we just don't know how to help. And so I reached out to the groups and those that responded back to me, we put in the schools. And so last year we piloted a program at Sexton High School with United Mentoring Program, and it's run by Tracy Edmond and Carrie Smith. And this year we have a contract with them where they are with us all year and they're working with a group of students um, that are predominantly sophomores and juniors. And well, that's a big age, that's yes. an important age. And so that's particularly important as they're working toward graduation. How does that mentoring and graduation kind of go together? Because it's, it's good for people to know about it. Yeah, um, we need, more of our students won't, won't admit it, and I guess a lot of people don't really understand what the, the importance of having a positive role model in their lives and having an adult that isn't a teacher, that isn't an administrator, someone that's from the community that they may know, it might be a neighbor, it might be um, a relative, a friend of theirs, but someone that truly cares about them and they know they care and they wanna see them succeed. A lot of our mentor groups are former graduates of Sexton, Eastern, or Everett, and so this is their way of giving back to their community. So is it um, an issue of getting more mentors or more mentees involved? Uh, probably more mentees. Is that right? We have an influx of mentors, and the word is starting to spread. Well, that's a good problem to have, though. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we're getting MSU students that are interested, and they're recruiting for us more um, MSU volunteers. We're getting LCC students. Um, we're getting people from the community as well that work at General Motors or other areas, too, so staples in the community people that are wanting to give back. So the mentorship really gives young people some guidance and for you, particularly getting them into that graduation path, but how, how, what do they do on the tutoring side? The tutoring side, they really focus on academics. So we're really trying to raise the bar when it comes to our student athletes and show the importance that, yeah, you may be great at the sport, but there's more to life than playing football, basketball, and volleyball, or whatever it may be that they're interested in doing. So we want to also make sure they have something to fall back on too. And once you have that education, no one can take that away from you. And so how are we doing? Are, are we, I mean, you, you can't really tell until a young person graduates, but you're talking to folks all the time. So really in the Lansing School Districts, how, how are we doing with this program? They're excelling. I think more and more people are starting to see the need and we're having groups approach and say, what can I do? And they're very interested in getting in not only our high schools, but even our K-8 buildings, our elementary buildings. They want to start at younger ages and make a bigger impact. What would the impact be for younger ages? It would be enormous if you have all the folks who can participate. Huh? Yes, um, a lot of it has to do with raising attendance too. Um, sometimes it's just people can't get uh, their child to school. Parents can't do that. So we have community members that are willing to um, use their church vans, whatever it may be. And a lot of people in the community know each other and attend the uh, churches that are located by the schools. So it's something, someone they trust. And um, Dr. Sam Parker is a great example of that. He's really a good connection with our school and the community. So he's been very good about reaching out to us and saying, can you help me with connecting this parent to this administrator? 
or vice versa as well. So um, the contacts are really important and just making parents feel that their child is important to us. And so what's your pitch to parents? I mean, if you're gonna tell parents to get involved in something like this, what, what do you say to them? We care and the community cares. They're very passionate. I have not seen a community reach out and embrace students like this community has. And um, we're here for them. We really want them to understand that these programs are gonna only continue to grow. And as the word spreads, we're gonna get more and more people coming in and volunteering and tutoring and mentoring. You know, and the volunteering thing has really evolved and changed because really in this post-COVID environment, I mean, obviously, COVID and flu and other things are around, but it seems that volunteers would be more excited and parents would feel a little better about the safety of their kids now that we've kind of moved past that. You've always got to be vigilant, but you, do you hear the excitement from the volunteers? Oh yeah, they, they are excited to share what they're doing. Um, I stop in on a weekly basis because I'm at the high schools more than I am at the K buildings. And I talk to Carrie Smith and UMP and he shares with me how the administrators are excited, um, how the teachers say, finally, we have a group here that is invested in our students. And that's what they really want, someone that's passionate about what they do. And there's an investment, a long-term investment. They're not, the students know they're not leaving. They're gonna be there for them. And, and the teachers probably are most appreciative then too, right? Yes. Because it, as someone, I mean, obviously if you're a teacher, you're dealing with a lot of kids in a classroom, but someone who's building a bond, a relationship, and helping tutor other people, that, that must be really critical for teaching. Yes, and they can help bridge that piece. A lot of mentors say, put us where you need us. If you need us in the classroom to help out, we're more than happy to do that. If you need us in the hallways to supervise, we're happy to do that. And we're also happy to help in any way that connects that child with that teacher or the school more than anything else. Tell us what's the most important thing you want parents and kids to know about what you're doing in these programs and really developing community partnerships? Um, more than anything else, it's just that connection piece, connecting parents to the community and having them feel a sense of ownership in their child's education too, and having their child take ownership in that as well. So we really wanna reach out and continue forming these strong bonds with our community and our community partnerships so parents feel invested in their child's education. There's no stigma at all to someone who's being tutored I mean, obviously it's a good thing because they're, so talk a little bit about that. Some kids might just not wanna step forward. Some parents might be a little shy about doing that too. How do you get over that kind of thing? I think we're thinking it's building that relationship with a student. And a lot of it is just getting to know the student first and telling them this is why we're here. It's not a punishment for you. We're here to help you. And we're here to help you develop those talents, those skills that you need to be successful. So. Someone who comes in and builds this relationship, whether they're tutoring or mentoring or whatever they're doing, they kind of have to react to the individual student. And so how do you tutor the tutors and mentors <laughs> to do that? Because they got to be ready for individual kids who come in. Yes, a lot of it's understanding that don't take anything personally. Um, you are making connection with a student, even if you feel like you have tried everything you possibly can, but you're not connecting, you are actually making a difference. And it may not show right away, it may not show in two weeks, it may not show in two months, but over time, you're gonna see that develop and that trust is gonna develop because some of our students, they have lost trust in adults just because they have come and gone out of their lives so frequently. And our mentors and tutors, they're not going anywhere. They are invested in our students. So they're invested and they probably get great joy from actually yes. doing this. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, people in all age groups step forward to volunteer, but uh, especially seniors step forward yes. and help out. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, Carrie Smith, he is one of our lead mentors at United Mentoring Program and his mother-in-law, she said it perfectly. She goes, I'm gonna be the grandmother that a lot of these young people don't have. And she has no problem just inserting herself in there and being assertive with students, not 
overbearing or anything, but just saying, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. So if you need that tough love, I'm that tough love. And what do we see from students? What's the initial reaction or response? Because, I mean, obviously they might be forming relationships that they've never had in their life. We want them to, to get them to graduation, but there are a lot of other positive results too, right? Yes, um, for a lot of them, it's a positive adult in their life where they might not have that currently right now, and they may not have that stability of someone that they can trust and rely on. And those mentors and tutors are those people they go to. They're the ones that they might call and say, can I talk to you about the situation? Or can I get some advice from you? Where they don't feel they have that connection with a parent. And people can get involved probably by contacting you and the district, but you're also working with organizations as yes. well. They're, they're bringing folks into volunteer time. Yes, and that's the biggest piece right there is reaching out to the organizations and the ties they have in the community is helping us recruit and really form those solid bonds because we're getting mentors that are passionate. And that's the key right there is the passion from the mentors. If you want to work with students of all ages, you have to, pa you have to be passionate about it. Well, if someone watching this and watching you right now wants to be involved in a volunteer, mentor, you know, maybe tutor, how do they connect with you and sign up for the program? Oh, they could reach out to me by email. They can call my office as well and um, reach out to the superintendent. I'm actually just right off his office, so I am very visible in the administration building, so they can always reach out that way or they can reach out to our mentoring groups at so, my schools. So story.morelansingschools.net? Yes. There you go. <laughs> just, just that simple. And so, so are you seeing this the thing really, I mean, you've been doing this for a little while now. You see it really developing and growing in the future? I do. Um, we started out with one group and now we have five. And so I wasn't really envisioning five. I thought we'd just stick with one. And then I'm thinking, well, what can we really handle? And the superintendent asked me too, what do you think you can handle? So um, just the support we've been given by the community and the organizations, they come with a well-oiled machine. They're ready to go in, they know what they wanna do, and they're here to support us any way they possibly can. So I do see the groups growing as word spreads. Well, Dory, thank you very much. Dory Moore, Lansing School District. We're talking about all the community partnerships that this district offers, the Lansing School District, and mentoring and tutoring, and in the end, We'll get more people graduating, more young people graduating. So contact Dory and get involved. I'm Bob Colt, and we will continue our conversations in the Lansing School District.